Man, look at that, look at that, look at this wide angle lens we got going on here. This is so cool. It looks so good. I'm I'm ha I'm happy with it. Now today we may not be talking about lenses, but we are talking about gear. It's been a while since I've done a gear video talking about the gear that I use to make these YouTube videos as well as run my live stream. So today I figured we would do a 2021 gear tour. And real quick before we dive into the list, if you guys like content like this, please be sure to hit the subscribe button. We'll greatly appreciate it. And with that, let's jump in to the 2021 gear tour. Okay, the first thing that we're gonna start with is obviously the camera. The camera we're running with is the Lumix G7 and right now we're using the 10 millimeter 2.8 lens that we just got and overall I am very happy with this camera. The Lumix G7 is kind of one of the best cameras if you are just getting into photography or videography or content creation in general. This is probably one of the best beginner cameras to get. It shoots in 4K 24 frames per second, 4K 30, also 1080p 60, 30, and 24. Honestly, this camera has been phenomenal to use and I have had very little issues with it. There are only two things that kind of bug me about this camera. The first one being that this is a crop censored camera. That means that this camera is not going to do super well in low light, just kind of how it is. The second feature that I wish this camera had was that I wish it could shoot in 120 frames per second. That would be amazing and I could shoot some nice slow motion b-roll uh, like you saw in the last video. I mean it was just so nice on the iPhone and I wish I could shoot it with this camera but I can't. It's sad day. I mean, I could shoot in 60 frames per second and then slow that down, but still, I mean, getting that 120, you get that nice slow motion. It's just buttery smooth B-roll and ah, it makes me sad. But even though it's a crop sensor camera and can't shoot in 120 frames, it's still not a deal breaker for me. I still think this is a fantastic camera to use, especially for the price you're paying for 500 bucks. I mean, you're getting a camera that shoots in 4K. It has a microphone jack. Um, it's just honestly, it, with this kind of quality video, it looks good and I would recommend it to anybody who's starting getting into the content creation world. All right, item number two, we're talking lighting. When you're filming video, lighting is single-handedly the most important thing that can help boost your video quality. Now the lights that I'm using right now are two LED panels by a company called Dazny. I've never heard of this company before, but I found them on Amazon and the panels got good reviews. Uh, so I thought I'd give it a shot. And what's great about these LEDs is they are by color, so you can change the color temperature when you want. And you could also run them from a remote, which is pretty cool, right? I mean, you could run it from a remote. That's just, that's just nice. That way I could just stand here, actually look at the little screen and, you know, fix my lighting the way I need it to look without having to, you know, move out of frame, adjust it, come back, and then have to go back and adjust it again. And if it's not right, it, I could just do it with the remote. Now there really isn't anything super special about these LED panels compared to others. Um, there really isn't, to be honest, but they do the job. The one problem that I did have with the LED panels was that the, the light was pretty harsh on my face and so you were getting a lot of shadowing going on. It didn't look very natural, it just didn't look great. So the way to alleviate that problem is you get soft boxes. So I got a couple of defuse soft boxes to put over the LED panels and now that has made the light nice and soft. And what's nice about these soft boxes is they're not super big. A lot of the aperture soft boxes that you see are like super wide, super big domes. And it's like, I, I, I wasn't, I didn't, I don't have the space for that. So they're smaller, you can collapse them. They're portable. You could throw them in a bag and you're good to go. So yeah, that's really what I like about these soft boxes. Overall, they've really helped improve uh, the lighting in these videos, which has been really nice. All right, these next couple items are gonna be items that I have on my PC setup and that I use uh, to help me live stream. Now the next item really isn't a streaming tool, but more so a just gaming and just kind of nice computer tool to have, the G Pro, Logitech G Pro series keyboard and mouse. I recently switched from Corsair to Logitech and I switched to the G Pro wireless mouse and uh, the G Pro X keyboard. I think that's, I think I got the names right there. <laughs> I don't know, Logitech's naming, I, I get confused. But using them for a month or so, it's been really nice. It's, I've been able to save desk space with the 10 keyless keyboard and then uh, having a wireless mouse is just freed up a lot of space as well. And I don't have it to be tethered to a, a wire, which is nice. So overall, big fan of that. Now I've been debating on whether or not to make like a comparison, a review video of Corsair and Logitech keyboards. So if you guys wanna see that, be sure to leave a comment down below. Would love to hear your thoughts on that. It's still a video I'm kind of debating on whether or not I wanna make. But yeah, let me know if you wanna see that video in the comments. Now the next piece of gear is a big streaming tool, uh, the GoXLR. I mean, I've been using the GoXLR for two years now. I remember when it got announced at TwitchCon 2018 and I never hit buy now so fast on Amazon. 
than when I did when it launched in December and I was able to actually pre-order it. I, I, I hit that buy now so fast. I was at work at the time, so I hit buy now <laughs> super fast. And so uh, it was a really great, it's a really great device and I'm a big fan of it. It really has made audio uh, really seamless and I've had very little to no issues with the Go XLR. And audio problems can be some of the worst kind of problems. So the Go XLR has really uh, just alleviated all that and really just made it so easy uh, to have good audio. Now I have done a full in-depth review on the Go XLR. So if you guys wanna go check that out, I believe it's here or here, link, link in one of the corners. But yeah, go check that video out. That is a full review on the Go XLR. Now I do love the Go XLR a lot, but the problem that it's running into right now is that uh, Elgato is catching up. The Elgato Wave basically took everything that the Go XLR is so good at doing and put it into software and now the Go XLR kind of feels it, it, it's not necessarily worth it. I mean, just like if you're starting a stream or if you're looking at getting into YouTube or streaming and, and you need a microphone, I mean, I would just, there's no way I can't recommend the Elgato Wave. Uh, the Go XLR, it's, it's great, but the price point is just it's tough. It's tough to justify it when you can get something that's almost just as good in the Elgato Wave. So TC Helicon's got some, uh, they've, they, they've got some innovating to do. And so we'll see what happens this year though. I'm excited. All right, next item on the list, microphones. When I'm creating content, I use three different microphones. We have the Rode Video Micro, the Rode Video Mic Pro, and the Rode NT1. I don't think there's a microphone that I own that's not Rode. <laughs> To be honest, I think Rode really does have really great microphones. I've been a fan of them. I think they sound really good. So that's why I kind of just continually come back to using their microphones. So now let's do a quick audio test of all three of those microphones. All right, so this is what the Rode Video Micro sounds like. Uh, great little mic for anybody using like, let's say a phone or recording with a GoPro, stuff like that. Smaller cameras, maybe a point and shoot camera. This is a great mic to use that. Um, it sounds really great. It's a great little compact mic. It's very portable and can go just about anywhere. Now this is the Rode Video Mic Pro that you're hearing and overall it still sounds really great. I have loved the quality of this shotgun mic. I always recommend a shotgun mic if you're using a DSLR or a bigger rig like that. Uh, the one thing though that you have to be careful with this microphone is you gotta remember to turn it on. That's like the biggest thing. Sometimes you just plug it in and you just forget to turn it on. Uh, with the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus, uh, you can just plug it in and it turns on with the camera. This one, the Rode Video Mic Pro, you do have to turn it on and it runs on a battery. So you do have to be careful of that. But other than that, it's a great microphone. It sounds fantastic. Uh, just remember to turn it on. <laughs> All right, what you're hearing now is the Rode NT1 microphone. This is probably one of Rode's top microphones that they have. Uh, and it's kind of meant to compete with the Shure SM7B. And I think it does a pretty good job of that. I've had this microphone for years for the stream setup, early YouTube setups. I mean, this thing has stuck with me through thick and thin. Overall, I think it works really well for streaming. Uh, if you want to stream on Twitch or YouTube, or if you are making YouTube videos, uh, like gaming videos from your desk or talking head videos, something like this, uh, it works great for that. But yeah, overall, if you want to invest some money into a good microphone, a good XLR microphone, uh, the Rode NC1 is a great choice. So yeah, those are the microphones that I use to create content and overall big fan of Rode. Uh, enjoy their products a lot. All right, now we're gonna get into something super cool, tripods. <laughs> now I also use three different tripods to create content as well. A lot of times it depends on what space I'm filming in, what camera I'm filming with, uh, which will determine what uh, tripod that I'm using. This is a little Manfrotto Pixie Pod. Overall, I'm a big fan of this. This has come in handy so often and it just fits right in the little side pocket of my uh, camera bag. And so it just is really awesome, really handy, really good for using if you're filming on your iPhone or a GoPro or a small lightweight camera like that or point and shoot. This is really great for that. I This is just really nice to have. And then we have the famous, or depending on your use case, the infamous Gorilla Pod. You know, when Casey and Istat started using Gorilla Pods, everyone's like, these are amazing, these are so cool. And then, I don't know, it kind of feels like they, they, they've they kind of fallen off a, a little bit, just, just a little bit, but they still are useful. I mean, you can still use it to, you know, get into weird places and angles uh, to film from. And it's just really awesome. It's still really good. It's very versatile. Just don't trust it. <laughs> That's the thing. It, this thing could fall at any point. I mean, it's just, you gotta be careful with it. Now, Joby does make multiple different sizes of these. Like, so if you want one for your DSLR mirrorless camera, or if you're looking for one for a GoPro or your phone, they do make those as well. I mean, again, these are still very versatile, still very useful and have many use cases. So I still love having one of these around. They're super useful and um, they're handy as well. Now, the main tripod that I use is called the Dulcia Proline. At least I think that's what it's, I think that's the name. 
I think. The tripod is actually really solid in that it can collapse very easily. You can set it up very fast. It's not hard to use whatsoever and it can collapse super nicely and is super portable. So I really enjoy using this tripod. Um, haven't had any issues with it and haven't had any problems at all. And what's nice about the ProLine's base plate is that it has a little little tab here that you can use to spin it. So you don't actually need, you know, a little coin to unscrew the, the you know, the base plate. You can just screw it right in to the camera and it works. It's solid. But yeah, those are the three tripods uh, that I use for filming. All right, so the last item on the list that I use is the Satachi or Satachi? Satachi? It's, it's a USB-C hub. When I upgraded to the new MacBook Pro in the summer, I knew that I was gonna need, you know, I was going all in on USB-C and I was going to lose all the ports. I was gonna lose the HDMI, the USB, I was gonna lose even my SD card reader, which I kinda need that to import footage. So that kinda sucked, but this has all of that in one. Now, when you plug this in, it does take up your two USB-C ports on the side of your laptop, but it does give them back to you, uh, plus your two USB ports, and then an SD card reader, a micro SD card reader, as well as HDMI on the side. Now, this is just nice to have. It goes in my bag. I'm able to use it with my laptop wherever, uh, whenever. So it's super nice, super versatile, really happy with it. All right, well, that's pretty much the gear, the top gear that I use on a daily basis. Now, I want to pass the question off to you. What is one of your favorite items that you have in your setup? I'm always curious to see what other people got in their setups. It's always fun to see what other people have. So let me know what your favorite item is down below in the comments. But with that, thank you so much for watching. Appreciate you. If you guys like this video, please do leave it a like. We'd greatly appreciate it. And if you want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button. We've got some cool things coming in the pipeline, and I'm excited to share it with you. But until then, thank you so much for watching. Appreciate you, and I will see you in the next one. I mean, I still can't get over how wide this is. Like for a 10 millimeter lens, like this is nuts. I just gotta make sure I'm in focus though. Like the focus is, the, that's the hardest part. I think I'm in focus. I think I am. I have a tiny little screen to look at that. That's all I got. <laughs> so hopefully I got it. If I did, great. If I didn't, I'm really sorry. <laughs>